South Shore bar style pizza, if you've never had it, is a national treasure from the East Coast. It's got a crispy fried thin crust and a very interesting cheese blend that sets it apart from other thin crusters across the nation. To make it, I'll grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'll measure 300 grams of water, six grams of instant yeast, 40 grams of olive oil, 525 grams of all-purpose flour, and then 10 grams of salt. Next, the dough hook goes on and I'll mix this on medium low speed for two to three minutes. This first part of the mix is really just about combining things gently so that the flour doesn't spill over the sides. And once this dough has started to come together like this, I'm gonna flip this mixer up to high speed and mix it for five more minutes. By the way, I'm using all-purpose flour here instead of bread flour because I found that the stronger bread flour held on to way too much of its gas when it was baked, and that led to a bunch of weird bubbles that kind of ruined the pizza, even after I docked it with the fork. And once this dough is clearing the bowl like this, I'll stop the mixer and give the dough an assertive tug to see how the gluten looks. And you guys know the drill at this point, no tearing, no shearing, so it's good to go. Next, I'll flip this dough onto my cutting board and then divide it into four roughly 220 gram size pieces. From there, I'll shape this dough into balls by folding the backside over itself and then rolling those folds into a seam. Once the folds are on the bottom side like this, I'll use my palm and fingertips to roll the dough into a ball with a medium level of tension. Too much tension in a pizza dough ball can sometimes make it hard to roll out. And once I've got all four of these balls rolled up, I'm gonna grab something to ferment them in. For me, most of the time, the best option is these little Pyrex containers. And I like them because they allow me to pull the exact number of pizza doughs that I need out of the fridge at one time. I'll spray all four of these real quick with some olive oil pan spray to try and mitigate any stickiness, and then I'll load in all four of my doughs. From there, I'll cover them up and set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, I'll stack these doughs and then throw them in the fridge for at least 24 hours, but preferably longer. This dough gets really crispy around day three or four. And if you're wondering, hey, Bri, why didn't you ferment this dough before you divided it? Isn't that how you like make pizza? Well, for certain types of pizza like Neapolitan or pan pizza, where you want a voluminous breadiness, that extra bit of gas produced in a primary fermentation is desirable. But for most thin crust pizzas, an excessively gassy dough leads to weird pizza ruining bubbles, like I mentioned before, so we can skip that step. The next day, or several days later, I'm gonna pull these doughs out of the fridge to temper them about two hours before I wanna eat. These doughs have just about doubled in size in the fridge and they developed a bunch of yeast boozy aroma. They're going to be delicious. Now, while these warm up, I'm going to set them off to the side and then grab a can of crushed tomatoes for pizza sauce. This sauce can be conveniently made right in the can. So I'll rip it open, lose the lid, and then add in 100 grams of tomato paste to help bring some intensity and extra thickness. Then 12 grams of salt, 20 grams of sugar, two grams of garlic powder, two grams onion powder, two grams black pepper, two grams dried basil, two grams dried oregano, one gram of chili flakes, and then in goes my immersion blender, and I'll spin this up to combine. For bar style pizza, I tend to go with an easy to make lo-fi pizza sauce like this one, because that's most likely what the teenager making the pizza in the bar kitchen is doing as well. And cooked sauces with fresh onions and garlic and herbs are delicious, but for other styles of pizza like Detroit or New Jersey where the sauce sits on top of the cheese and needs to be very thick and very intense with flavor. Now, once this sauce is fully pureed, it's time to discuss cheese. From what I understand from deep diving on Reddit is that this style of pizza uses a blend of two cheeses, mozzarella and cheddar. Specifically, I've got a block of full fat aged mozzarella here because it holds up to this pizza's long bake time better than part skim wood. And as far as cheddar goes, I've got a young generic white cheddar here. Less age is preferable because too much will break into an outright grease trap that has an unpleasant bile flavor to it. Young cheddar is still going to break and be oily on this pizza, but in a nostalgic pleasant way. Think arcade style pizza. In total, for four of these pizzas, I'm going to use 450 grams or about a pound of full fat mozzarella and 225 grams or a half pound of young white cheddar. And as usual, I prefer to grate my own cheeses to avoid any anti-caking agents with pre-shredded, but if you have to, pre-shred will not not work. And once I've got about a pound and a half of grated cheese mixed together, it's time to make my favorite topping for this style of pizza, fresh, hot, Italian sausage. For that, into a bowl, I'll combine one pound or 450 grams of fatty pork. This stuff is 80-20 and I wouldn't go any leaner than that. Then 10 grams of salt, eight grams of sugar, two grams of black pepper, two grams of garlic powder, one grams of oregano, one grams of dried sage, five grams paprika, one gram of chili flake, five grams of red wine vinegar, and finally, two grams of crushed fennel seed. To mix this together, I'll just hop in with my hands and give it a squeeze and fold to get everything well combined. Make sure to work the meat a little bit extra here to get it stickier so that it balls up and the chunks on the pizza a little easier. And there we go, semi-spicy sausage that's been perfumed with sage, fennel, and black pepper. 
it's too good and too easy not to make it yourself. Now I'll set that aside so that we can get down to pizza business. This dough has been proofing for about 90 minutes at this point and it's room temp and is gonna be much easier to stretch than if it was cold. Next, I'm gonna need a pan to build this pizza. Specifically, I recommend using a 12 inch pizza pan from the Lloyd Pan Company. They make the best Detroit style pizza pans that I've ever used and they brought that rugged commercial grade nonstick coating to a flatter round shape. Not sponsored, but I'll link to it below if you're interested. If you don't have a Lloyd pan and aren't planning on buying one, you definitely could use a cheap grocery store pan. It just requires a little bit of extra work and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. First, we're gonna make the standard issue cheese version of this pizza and then second, I'm gonna show you how to make what I call the B-Boy Supreme, which is a more maxed out, way more dressed up version. Stick around for that. To make this first pizza, I'll flour my board, then carefully flip out one of my tempered pizza doughs and yeah, it got stuck to the glass a little bit. That's no problem because this pizza is gonna be rolled totally flat. Now, a little bit more flour on top, then a flip and a touch more flour. And from there, I'll grab my rolling pin and start to roll this out. I'll give it a few back and forths, then turn it 90 degrees and then give it a few more back and forths. And don't hesitate to add flour here to keep the rolling pin from sticking to the dough. And also make sure to get the edges of this thing rolled as flat as you can. Those tend to stay thick if you don't and that can lead to a fat crust thin middle situation. And once I got this dough rolled into a roughly 10 inch round like this, I'll grab a fork and give this pizza a docking. Docking is a fancy word for just poking holes in a pizza to prevent it from rising too high in the oven. This will keep this thin crust pizza on the thin side. Next, I'll grab my Lloyd pan, which I sprayed liberally with pan spray earlier, and I'll lay in my dough. From there, I'll do my best to evenly spread this out in the pan so that there's no wrinkles or bare spots or bubbles. And once it's kind of uniform in the pan, I'll go around and press this crust upwards into the sides. I'm shooting to get this crust pushed up about a half inch or so all the way around. And there we go, time to dress this thing. First thing down is my sauce. Four spoonfuls, or about maybe a third cup, and I'll spread that all the way up to the top edge of the crust and maybe even a little bit beyond it. Behind that, I'll add in two big handfuls of my mozzarella cheddar blend, maybe a cup and a half, and I'll push that all the way to the edge, just like the cheese. Next, to bring some aged cheese funkiness, I'm gonna sprinkle a few handfuls of dusty Parmesan on top to make this thing a three cheese pizza. And finally, this is very important. I'm gonna finish with a strong sprinkle of flaky salt or reg salt if you don't have flaky. And this seasons the pizza. It's gonna take it from an average pizza to a pro level one, trust me. And once we're all dressed up, this pizza is gonna go into a 550F oven onto a pizza steel that's been preheated for at least 30 minutes. Now, this pizza gets baked in two phases, the first of which is six minutes in the pan, and the second is gonna be on the steel, but we'll get to that in just a second. And once the cheese is looking all gooed up and bubbly like this, it's time to pull it out and take a look at the bottom. Mm, as you can see, it's getting there, but it's not what I would consider to be crunchy or crispy, and plus the top of this pizza still needs a lot more heat. So I'll scoot this out of the pan and right onto my pizza steel and cook it for three to five more minutes. While that finishes, let me quickly thank Vetted for sponsoring this video. If you're like me and spend way too much time researching anything before you buy it, I would highly recommend checking out Vetted. Vetted is a free browser extension that compares product reviews and prices for you so that you can know you're getting the best product for your money, hopefully without spending three hours doing research first. For example, I need a new coffee grinder. So I search coffee grinder and Vetted pulls up the best one in each price range with the top reviews and shows me where to get it for the best price. Vetted automatically works within Amazon and Google. So when you're looking for any product, the research that you are gonna do anyway has already been done for you. It's pretty genius actually. My favorite part of Vetted, honestly, is just the time savings. I always get sucked into black holes of research trying to save just a little bit more money, so having some help in that department is nice. So to shop smarter with Vetted and to start saving time and money, you can get it for free using my link down below. It's super easy, and if you use it, Vetted will think that I'm cool and maybe sponsor more of my videos. After 10 to 11 minutes of bake time, this pizza is ready to pull out. And yes, 11 minutes is a long time to cook a small pizza at 550, but this style of pizza is supposed to be a little bit hammered. Like the cheese is supposed to be fried and lacy like this. And look at this, I mean, come on, tell me that you wouldn't crush this with a pitcher of stone cold bush beer pulled fresh from the tap while watching some sports event. And here's the thing about a pizza like this. It's good, it's crunchy, it's salty, and swimming in molten cheddar fat 
like all good bar food should be. Sure, you could bake this pizza less and have less cheese grease, but then you'd also have a less crispy crust and less cheese grease. That's kind of a feature here, not a bug. And oh yeah, back to that cheap grocery store pizza pan. This is how you get this pizza right. Of course, you're gonna cook it for six minutes in the pan and then four to five on the steel, just like for the Lloyd pan version. And after it's baked, you can see that the bottom is very blonde and pretty floppy. So to crisp it up, I'm gonna throw it onto a very low burner and sear it for about two to three minutes. Disclaimer, keep a very close eye on this because this pan is not designed for this type of heat, but it does work and it'll get you about 90% of the way there. Now for the ultimate version of this South Shore bar pizza, we need to load it up with toppings. All cheese is fun, but bar pizza should be like one-to-one -one pizza to stuff. So down goes a whole bunch of my fresh sausage, then a generous dose of chopped roasted red bell peppers for some sweetness. Then of course some pepper and chain dogs, woof, woof. And then finally, I'll hit it with a few dozen peps and a big grip of Parmesan cheese to make it a B-boy supreme. I'll bake it for 10 minutes, half in the pan and half on the steel. And there we go, an absolutely psycho version of thin crust pizza. In Chicago, where I grew up, I thought we had thin crust pizza like on lock, but this cheddary, greasy, crunchy pan fried option is a national treasure as well. If you're from the East Coast and you know this style of pizza well, please let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you don't like it, tough. I think it's awesome. And if you haven't had this style before, I really hope you make it soon. Let's eat this thing.